Hey, this is going to be an animated book review of the book The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And the first idea I want to get into is relative income versus absolute income. So let's say there's a guy that makes $50,000 a year. He's on salary. He makes $50,000 a year, and there's this other guy, and he makes $100,000 a year. Now, in absolute income, he is making twice as much money as the first guy. However, when we start looking into their specific positions, we realize the first guy is only working 10 hours a week. That means he has tons of time to do other stuff. However, the second guy is working 80 hours a week, and this is he's putting a lot of time into his job. And when you compare, you realize that that the absolute income the second guy is making is twice as much as the first guy. But the relative income, if you calculate it down to cost per hour, his profit per hour, how much he's earning, the first guy is earning way more. And then uh, let's say the second guy is stuck in a city. He's stuck in an office job and he can't leave. But the first guy, he can uh, he's free to move wherever he wants to. He can move to Canada, he can move to Europe, he can move to Australia. He can move anywhere in the world. And this lowers his cost of living. He can live somewhere where the cost of living is only $10,000. To whereas the second guy has to live in some place where the cost of living is 60000 and that's more than half of his income. And you realize that it's not necessarily what you make, but it's the availability of stuff that you can buy. To be rich is to have a lot of money. To be wealthy is to have a lot of time. The second idea I got from this is something called the low information diet, and I really liked this idea. Basically he's saying that you need to get into understanding that the information you consume needs to be effective and not efficient. Stuff like TV or Netflix, Tim Ferriss says that a lot of this stuff is time consuming, negative, irrelevant to your goals, and outside of your influence. And he says that if you take all of the stuff that you've watched or read in the last 24 hours, he wants to challenge you to tell him that it's not at least two of the four. And this is what the low information diet is all about, about finding stuff to get rid of that you don't need in your life anymore. So cut out that a- extra hour of TV and cut out that morning 30 minute magazine that you get nothing out of. The third idea I really liked out of this book was outsourcing tasks. Now there are virtual assistants online. You can pay them anywhere between 4 to $10. You can pay even more, but you can get them pretty cheap per hour. And he says that when you start taking stuff in your life that is time-consuming, let's say you can work at a job where you get paid $20 an hour. Well, if there's something that you need to do, like looking through data and organizing it, that's not something that's going to earn you $20 an hour. Instead, you should outsource it to a a virtual assistant somewhere who you can pay $10 an hour, and that will profit you $10 an hour, plus you'll get that extra hour to do whatever else you want to do. And he actually takes it so far as to sending his wife flowers. They do stuff like research, they do stuff like finding a parking spot if you need one. They can even do stuff like uh, ordering garbage bins for your house. In fact, I plan on transcribing this video through a virtual assistant. The stuff that they can do is outrageous, and a lot of people need to start implementing it in their life to become more efficient and effective. And a lot of these tips go for entrepreneurs, and the last tip that I really got for this really goes for employees, and that is removing yourself from the workplace. He gives a few tips on how to kind of sneak out of your job, how to get out of the office more. So a lot of tasks in most jobs, for example, I worked at a job, and mostly what I was doing was it was a four-hour per day job, and I could get everything done in an hour, but I had to sit there for the next three hours to act like I was working. Otherwise, I wouldn't get paid or I'd get fired from the job. In other words, there's a lot of little stuff that you kind of make look like a bigger project. And there are tons of jobs out there that do that. And Tim Ferriss is saying that you should you should try to get away from your job. So that way, one, you can save on commuting. Two, you can have that extra time to do what you want to do as opposed to making your time your company's. This way, you can spend that first hour doing what you're supposed to be doing, but then you can spend the next three hours doing whatever you want to do. He says that you should ask your boss for maybe a Friday off and show them that you can work twice as hard on a Friday. And then on Monday, bring it in. And he says the next step is to taking Tuesday and Wednesday off. And the reason you take Tuesday and Wednesday off is so that it doesn't look like you're sick or something. It doesn't look like you're just trying to play off the weekend you got drunk or something over the weekend. He says take Tuesday and Wednesday off and show your boss that you can work from home using software like GoToMyPC that allows you to work on your computer while at home and show them that you can work twice as hard, even three times as hard, 
while you're away from the office without distractions. Anyway, this book was a really good read, and I learned a lot of interesting stuff from it. I suggest you reading this book. It's probably going to be in my top ten. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you learned something. Subscribe for more great video animations. Thank <laughs> you.